Hello and welcome to Lincoln to Local. I'm Hannah Davis and today we're joined again by Steve Thompson in our Public Policy Department to bring you another update on our work at the State Capitol this week. Steve, this week we saw um, some progress on a bill that would help um, our friends in the forestry industry um, with a sales tax exemption. So can you explain the details of that? That's right. We're very excited to uh, celebrate a big victory uh, for the timber industry and really the southeastern Oklahoma economy. Uh, our surrounding states allowed for a sales tax exemption for certain types of commercial forestry and logging equipment that Oklahoma did not offer. And as the timber industry is a very valued member of the ag community, we felt like it was quite appropriate, similar to other type of farm and ranch uh, sales tax exemptions, to include those uh, in the same type of qualification. And it's actually uh, been uh, uh, under consideration for two or three years without passage in the legislature. And it, it fought, saw final passage in the Senate this week and is headed to the governor for signature. So we're really excited to hopefully grow the economy and, and be able to sell and service some of that equipment in a way that Today, currently, they were, were traveling across the state line to, to buy that at a reduced rate. And so hopefully we can sell, sell some more of those products here in Oklahoma. For sure. We also saw some um, progress on a bill to help producers when they're applying for uh, water permits. So what exactly will that bill do and what can producers be looking for? This is another issue that, that's been around for a couple of years. We've been trying to find the right mix uh, to, to get all the parties uh, to agree to that. But uh, currently, uh, if, if you meet the, the laws and rules for a water permit, the water board staff approves that, but then they have to wait until their next quarterly board meeting uh, to get it officially approved by the board so before you can move forward with your project. And this would allow permits that are not protested. If there's something controversial, it still goes through the long-term process. But if, if something is not objected to by anyone and the executive director and staff deems it to be in compliance with, with all the legal requirements, you can move forward with the next step in, in your process. And so it, it's a small but meaningful step to speed up the regulatory process for anybody applying for a water permit. Great. Um, we also saw the legislature lay out a plan for um, nearly all Oklahomans who have been impacted by the winter storm and electric bills. Um, so what kind of what will that plan do um, to help our producers and all Oklahomans really? Big announcement from uh, the leaders of the, the Energy and Utility Committees this week that they've worked with the Corporation Commission and a number of electric providers to come up with a framework to advance uh, throughout the rest of the session to allow folks who uh, whether your individual business saw uh, a really shocking increase in your electric bill based on the record storm that we had earlier this year, it would allow that those, those payments to be made over a course of time, more or less like your financing of your home or something else like that that you spread out over a number of years. The state had uh, somewhere around $4 billion in, in excess charges over the normal uh, time of year. And so uh, the, the folks can now pay that out in small increments over a period of years. And we really think it's, it's, it's the best way to approach a bad situation. But the uh, securitization payments are still being debated in the legislature. And so we'll keep a close eye on that and be happy to answer any questions our members have as we work towards uh, that really unprecedented type of action this year. Uh, we also saw this week um, the Senate is now back kind of to full steam with a new senator in place. Um, so can you explain kind of who that is and um, what happened this week? That's right. They, they've been operating with 47 uh, members so far this session. Uh, as most of our folks know, uh, uh, Congresswoman Stephanie Bice uh, uh, left her state Senate seat earlier this year. And so through the, the special election process, uh, the new Senator Jake Merrick was elected, who had been supported by our Ag Fund Board of Directors earlier this year. So we're excited to see that. And he was sworn in um, from, from Yukon, Oklahoma, to take his seat uh, in the Senate on Wednesday morning. And so we're excited to get to know him a little bit better and uh, happy to see all 48 members of the Senate uh, in, uh, properly seated and functioning. Great. Thanks for the update. And thanks for joining us for another episode of Lincoln to Local.